Scientific progress is difficult to predict, but human behavior isn't. And so today I'm going to make a big and bold prediction. Geoengineering is coming. We're going to meddle with the climate. But not in the way you've been told. Climate engineering, sometimes called geoengineering, is the deliberate tampering with Earth's climate in the hope of improving human well-being. The most discussed option is stratospheric aerosol injections. That's the idea of spraying tiny particles, that's the aerosols, into a layer of the upper atmosphere, that's the stratosphere, to reflect sunlight and cool Earth. Another idea for climate engineering is marine cloud brightening. This works by spraying sea salt into existing clouds over the oceans to make them whiter so that they reflect more sunlight. One can also dump iron into the ocean so that algae take up more carbon dioxide or pour silica microbeads into the Arctic Ocean to make ice temporarily more reflective or to pump around water in the Arctic to thicken ice layers. What these methods have in common is that they're inexpensive and don't require many actors. The costs to stop further water Warming with stratospheric aerosol injections, for example, has been estimated to be just about $30 billion per year. That's maybe not your idea of cheap, but it's basically nothing compared to tens of trillions that the energy transition will take up. These measures have been hugely controversial, primarily because they do nothing about the root problem, which is the increase of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Their attempts to remedy the worst consequence, temperature increase, but wouldn't do anything about other problems such as ocean acidification caused by the carbon dioxide, and they're likely to change global rainfall patterns. Probably, because really we don't know. Attempts to scientifically study the consequences have been shut down by environmental activists repeatedly. In March last year, Harvard University was forced to discontinue an experiment to test stratospheric aerosol injections. In May, Washington University had to put a marine cloud brightening project on an indefinite pause, allegedly due to health and environmental concerns. And the startup Make Sunsets, which did some tiny, unauthorized stratospheric experiments launched from Mexico, triggered the Mexican government to ban all geoengineering. Most countries, however, have no laws on geoengineering, and at a meeting last year, the UN didn't come to any resolution on what to do about it. The UK government government recently put money into further studies. Most of the attention has gone to stratospheric aerosol injections because that would be a global solution. But I think this isn't how things will go. First of all, I don't know about you, but personally I think $30 billion a year is still a lot of money. Also, normal airplanes don't fly in the stratosphere, and it's probably not the best time to ask Elon Musk. Last time I looked, he was busy insulting the British Prime Minister. Instead, what we'll likely see is an increasing amount of local weather modification programs that take the edge off heat waves, droughts, wildfires, and maybe at some point even hurricanes. And if you change a lot of weather, you change a little of the climate. Marine cloud brightening is an example of this. Then there is cloud seeding, a method to make clouds rain off when and where you want. China has a cloud seeding program that employs more than 30,000 people. That's a lot of people telling clouds what to do. India has used it to try and clean the polluted air over mega cities, and the governments of Indonesia and the Philippines took to cloud seeding to combat wildfires. Basically, what we're going to see as a global game of of weather modification with consequences that'll usually be downwinds, and that's normally in the east. For example, researchers from UCSD used climate models to study the impacts of marine cloud brightening off the US west coast. They found it could indeed reduce the risk of high temperatures in the US. However, it also decreased rainfall in that area and caused more frequent heat waves in Europe. And someone might want to look into what cloud seeding over China does to rainfall in California. I don't advocate geoengineering as a good solution. It isn't. But I think we'll do it anyway, and not just because it's inexpensive. If you reduce carbon dioxide emissions in your own country, or even as a person, the benefits will be distributed over the entire planet. 
Especially if you're a small country, you won't see much benefit from your own actions. It's a classical example of a collective action problem, and we've spectacularly failed at solving it. But geoengineering will benefit the people in your country. It'll prevent deaths during heat waves. It'll increase crop yields. It'll get politicians elected. It will happen. And that's why it's a bad idea to protest research on it. The more we know about the consequences, the better we'll be prepared. And it's about time we prepare, because maybe soon the weatherman will say, Today's weather is brought to you by ExxonMobil, sunny with a chance of corporate intervention. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and how to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples, like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.